Okay, single displacement reactions. You'll probably remember this pattern from grade 10. We generally write A plus BC produces B plus AC. So in grade 10, you didn't have to worry about whether the reaction occurs or not, and that's what's new now. Now you have to decide what the products are if a reaction occurs. So first it matters to notice what the element is in the reactants. Is that element a metal? And if it is, then that metal, A in this general formula, is going to replace the metal or the cation in BC. Now that's usually a metal ion, but sometimes it could be the hydrogen ion. And so if A is more reactive than B, then it will displace B. And that will put B on its own, and A forms an ionic compound with C. So these products form only if A is more reactive than B. So you have to check the activity series of metals on your test reference sheet or in the textbook to determine if this reaction occurs. So check that. Look at your test reference sheet or the textbook page for the activity series and look and see if zinc is more reactive than silver. Is zinc higher than silver? And you'll notice that it is and therefore the silver is going to be displaced. So we write the silver on its own and then form a compound with the zinc and the nitrate. So in terms of rough work, we have to have the zinc ion and the nitrate ion and then cross our charges down. So we come up with Zn bracket NO3 bracket two. Now in terms of states, the metals are all solids except for mercury, keep that in mind. And you can assume for now that these compounds are aqueous when you have a single displacement product of a compound. Okay, so check out number two. Is copper higher than calcium on the activity series? So you'll notice that it's not and therefore there's no reaction. So again, I'm not pulling that off the top of my head, I am looking at the activity series in order to detect that. So you can find it in your textbook for the single displacement reaction section or look on the back of your test reference sheet. Okay, now what if the metal is displacing hydrogen? Well, you'll see hydrogen listed on that activity series of metals, even though it's not a metal. And so you're looking to see if the magnesium is above hydrogen. If it's well above hydrogen, then it will react in, in um, cold water. Um, if it's not very high above hydrogen, then it will only displace hydrogen from warm water. But in the case of the reactant being an acid, as it is here, you can expect any metal above hydrogen to displace the hydrogen. And so when hydrogen is displaced, it forms H2 gas because hydrogen is a diatomic gas at room temperature. And then again, we do a little bit of rough work here, thinking of the magnesium ion and the chloride ion crossing the charges down, and we get MgCl2, which is aqueous. Okay, example four here. Example four involves sodium, and we're looking to see if sodium reacts with water. So looking to see if sodium displaces water. Now, when you need to think about water here as H, OH. So in other words, does the sodium, H and hydroxide here, so does the sodium displace the hydrogen? So is sodium above hydrogen on the activity series? Yes, it is. And so hydrogen gas will be formed. Now in pairing up the sodium and the hydroxide, remember to cross your charges down. So the sodium ion and the hydroxide ion, negative one. So cross your charges down and you'll have NaOH, again, aqueous. Now I haven't made the point about balancing these reactions, these equations, but yes, all of them should be balanced. So. I can see here that the sodium, I'm going to work a little backwards here to balance these, but I can see I have one sodium to start and one here, um, and so sodium looks balanced, but I run into trouble with the hydrogen, noticing that there's two here, and then I have two and one here. The oxygen's okay, I have one and one, 
So it seems kind of tricky here. I would recommend going back to the beginning and starting with a 2 in place of in front of the sodium. And so that means there are two Na's on both sides now with a 2 over here, which now makes for a total of 2 hydrogen here, plus 2 times 1, plus 2 hydrogen there. And so that 2 plus 2, there's actually 4 H's. Come back to the water side and place a 2 there. Checking your oxygen, 2 times 1 is 2. And back over here on the right side, 2 times 1 is 2. Okay, in terms of balancing for the previous reaction, we can look at the magnesium. We have one magnesium on both sides. I noticed two chlorine here and only one there, so I'll throw a two up here, which now makes for two H's, and that works with what's on the right side. Okay, just backing up to examples one and two, when I check Balancing here, I have one zinc and one zinc, one silver and one silver, and then two nitrates over here. So I think of this package of nitrates as being one there. So one times two would be two nitrates. In doing so, I've just altered the silver. So I'd better make sure there's two silver on the right side. Equation number two was uh, non-reactive. There were no products, so there's no need to balance there. Okay, so after these four examples, we just have to consider now what happens if A is a nonmetal. Okay, so again, we're looking at the single displacement pattern of an element and a compound. If that element is a nonmetal, then that nonmetal will displace the nonmetal in the ionic compound if the element is more reactive than the nonmetal that's in the compound. So if A is more reactive than C, then C will be displaced, so C will be on its own as the element in the products, and B will combine with A. Notice I wrote it in the order BA because we have the metal and then the nonmetal. Now, our, the nonmetals that we'll focus on here are really the halogens. So, can you uh, pause the video to recall the trend in reactivity of the halogens? And can you list the halogens from most reactive to least reactive? And then check back with the video. Okay, so you'll see I've listed it over here. Hopefully you remember the smallest halogen is the one that gains electrons the easiest. And so we have fluorine as the most reactive, then chlorine, then bromine, and iodine. So in fact, the order that they're listed in the periodic table gives us the reactivity of the halogens. So looking at this example, we have F2 on its own reacting with NaCl. So the question is, is fluorine going to displace the chlorine? So is fluorine higher than chlorine? If it is, it reacts. Yes, it is. So therefore, we can go and predict products. So the Cl is going to be on its own, diatomic, and it's a gas. And then that pairs up the Na and the F. Now, if you automatically just wrote NaF2, then you're forgetting for ionic compounds, we always use the crossdown method. So in fact, NaF is the formula. To go ahead and balance here, I'll just change to red now. So checking out, we've got two fluorine here and I see only one there, so I better put a two here. That makes the sodium now two sodium, so I come back to the left side and make two sodium. And two times one, there's two chlorine, come back here, I have two chlorine. Okay, looking at example two, we're looking at Br2 and Kf. So again, the question is, will bromine displace the fluorine? So we look over here, is bromine more reactive than fluorine? And in fact, it's not, it's lower. And so therefore, we can conclude that there's no reaction. Once there's no reaction, you don't balance the equation. There are no products to help you do that. Okay, that's it for single displacement.